to um, administration here at the police department. And um, while there were no specifics of a domestic violence incident, that was certainly enough that we wanted to look internally and make sure that the family was doing okay. And really, we were hoping to avoid a domestic violence incident. And you found that then everything was okay or not enough to obviously act on it just to monitor the situation? Right. We found no evidence of a domestic violence um, event. Um, we certainly could tell that Mrs. Donnie who had other concerns going on as well. And um, the, her family and friends were very insistent that um, Sergeant Donahue would not uh, commit any type of domestic violence and um, clearly told us that Mrs. Donahue was being untruthful about this matter. When you say her family, do you mean like her, her blood relatives, not his, his adult children? Uh, correct. Just her blood relatives, yes. And then did the, any of the first incident play into the investigation? What led them to the arrest with the second one on September uh, 22nd? No, I'd have to say the arrest was a stand-alone event. Um, what it did offer is um, the credibility um, of, of witnesses. Like I said, there was nobody there at that event. So absent bad information, then we need to look at the evidence that we have, and we need to look at the credibility of the witnesses. And certainly there were some credibility questions and, and issues that we discovered on that first internal. Did, did Sergeant Donahue suffer from any of the health concerns you mentioned earlier that, she, that Mrs. Donahue had about him? No. So I don't know if, this, if I'm allowed to ask this, but then do you guys question the mental state of Mrs. Donahue or the credibility of her with like I opened, I'm, I'm, I will not speak at all to Mrs. Donahue's health with the exception of the injuries related to, uh, to this event. Um, sorry if I'm making you repeat yourself, but um, I've already heard a few comments that, oh, okay, yeah, the police take care of their own, et cetera. Uh, um, what do you say to people like that who think it's, you know, it's been whitewashed and, uh, and you're, you're taking care of a, a guy who's, you know, been here at the police department for 30 years plus. I say we don't. Um, that's exactly why we asked another agency to investigate it. Um, we expect a lot out of our officers um, when these events occur, um, as evidenced by everybody in this room. Uh, we don't hide it. And you folks were brought in here much quicker than any other domestic I've ever known of uh, to discuss that matter. So we are very uh, open and transparent and uh, very prompt in sharing the information with you. Um, Frank, there will still be some naysayers out there that sure. uh, we did something here that is inappropriate or unethical. And I stand here to tell you that that's not the case. And then just to be clear, um, so that you had launched your internal investigation following the first accusation, right. which you reported to the officer, but then with the second one, you guys didn't do any investigation. It was strictly the sheriff's. No, um, there was call? there was the first internal investigation, which which came and went, and was closed. Okay. And there was no domestic violence with that event. Then we had the domestic violence allegation involving the injuries with Mrs. Donahue. And then at that point, two investigations started, one criminal investigation by the Rock County Sheriff's Department and one internal investigation conducted by James Police Department. Is it, is it common for, for police in general working domestic violence cases to make an arrest and then later find out that uh, uh, maybe they shouldn't have made an arrest or, or for the DA to no action it like this? Has this happened? I don't know that I... I'd say that it's it's common, but it does occur. I mean, sometimes with the information that we have in the instant, um, you know, additional information may come forward uh, later on that could, that could affect it. Um, typically, what we find is when we make a domestic violence arrest, and then our domestic violence intervention team goes out and re-interviews the victim and the family, we typically find more evidence to support the domestic violence arrest and not less. I can tell you that uh, I ran into a police officer in the hall this morning. Um, they were uh, sent to a domestic violence incident. Um, they could, the, the credibility of both the victim and the suspect were such that no arrests could be made. Um, and that 
report will be forwarded up to the district attorney's office. And uh, if he sees a uh, trip for an arrest, that's fine, but our officers uh, could not uh, determine uh, inappropriate arrest based on the credibility and the, the stories and the, um, inaccurate information that was shared with the officers. I will tell you that it's not atypical to have conflicting information. These are highly emotional events, um, particularly when you're in the throes of a divorce. They're, um, they're emotional. Um, people at times are not as forthcoming and as honest as they may normally be, just given the emotion of it. So it's, it's difficult for um, all parties involved, including the victims and the officers. You said it was not atypical, correct? You didn't say it was not. Well, uh, why don't you ask a question again? Okay. <laughs> Rephrase my answer. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I, uh, you said about having conflicting in information from from two parties. That's right. that's a normal thing, or a, a typical thing. Yeah, there's conflicting information that we run into that often. That's what it is. Right. Okay. And then um, what we had heard from the district attorney is that possibly the evidence, there's not enough evidence to prove that those injuries necessarily happened in a certain time frame, like on the day that she says. Is that what they had told you then? That there's no proof to link that, you know, the cracked river, the bruises happened from that day, that that's one of the reasons that... Yeah, we don't have that evidence. In fact, um you know, we've got one, one, one witness that says the contrary, and that's the uh, bartender at Diamond Days, because she was in a position to see an injury to the eye, and she did. And Mrs. Donahue says that she showed uh, this bartender the injury and was crying, and the bartender says, that didn't happen. I didn't see the injury. Mrs. Donahue was happy and bubbly and was going shopping. And the, and the, the roommate reported it the following day. Yes. He did not see the injuries. Mrs. Donahue came home to um, this, where she's staying now, um, sometime after 3 o'clock. Um, the roommate did not see any injuries, um, but did see injuries the next morning. And that's when Mrs. Donahue told the roommate that her husband had struck her and that he um, called the police department, as he should. But again, he didn't see any injuries until the next morning then. Right. Anything else? I'll just share with you that uh, the Jamesville Police Department has um, had a long history of supporting victims of domestic violence and providing thorough domestic violence investigations. Uh, we receive statewide recognition of our efforts training to other police departments throughout the state. If you have questions of our dedication on domestic violence matters, I would ask you to contact some of our domestic violence partners. Uh, please call the YWCA, the District Attorney's Office, uh, Office of Victims and Witness Services, Rock County Child Protective Services, or the Mercy Hospital SANE program. And they can say what they wish about our, our efforts and our partnerships with all of them for to protect victims of domestic violence. I'm sorry, Chief, the Rock County, what is it called? Uh, Child Protective Services. Oh, CPS. CPS. Yeah. CPS. Those are all partners that we meet with frequently to discuss uh, domestic violence and how we can best investigate domestic violence and um, offer services for our victims of domestic violence. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you.